One of the really cool things on Linux is that we have a ton of really good audio players, music players, and one of the things that has really stuck with us through the decades is this fascination with the old Winamp program. Winamp was a music player that was available, of course, on Windows like 25 years ago. I remember using Winamp, and Winamp was very popular. It was so popular, and so many millions, hundreds of millions probably, computer users have used Winamp that it does... It has a, a, a soft spot in some people's heart. Like, they really miss the old Winamp UI with the multiple windows that you could connect, and you had some really fantastic theming options with Winamp. Well, there are actually some Winamp clones that are available on Linux, actually on more than just Linux. Well, some of them are cross-platform, such as QMMP. So QMMP stands for the Qt-based multimedia player. So it's a Qt app, Qt app, right? And, of course, uh, it's cross-platform, works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. The UI is essentially a straight clone of Winamp. It even accepts Winamp theming, Winamp skins. And if I want to install uh, QMMP, I'm on an Arch-based system, but chances are QMMP is in the repository of whatever Linux distribution you happen to be running. So in my case, if I do a sudo pacman dash capital S QMMP, it is in the repositories. I've already installed it, so I won't reinstall. And then once you've got it on your system, just launch QMMP, and this is what it looks like out of the box. Now QMMP, just like all of these Winamp clones that are out there, you can tell that it's from a different kind of era from computers, because back in the day when Winamp was popular, the standard resolutions on computer monitors was like, you know, 480p, right? <laughs> now everybody has at least 1080p monitors, if not bigger, so the fonts and everything really look very tiny. That looked okay back in the 1990s, but now obviously, you know, the fonts are a little small. What you could do if you click the little hamburger menu on the main window here and you go to view and double size you know, it will make the fonts twice as big, which does make it a little easier, especially for purposes of this video. I'll keep it double-sized. But this thing is very much a straight Winamp clone, and just like Winamp, I've got the main window that I'm dragging around here, but these extra windows, the equalizer window, the playlist window, if I want to, I can snap that to the the main QMP window, right? Same thing with this one. I can snap that one to the bottom of the playlist and now I can drag them all around. Or, you know, I could actually you know, put them off to the side. I can arrange them however I want and then just drag them by the main title bar. Now, if I grab one of the other windows, you know, then I'm actually moving things around again. So I can actually swap the equalizer and the playlist now. And then, yeah, we've got that working. And because it's cute based, if I click on the title bars, you know, I can actually, you know, minimize these. I can actually collapse them completely. And, you know, oh, I accidentally played with the balance. I didn't want to do that on the equalizer. And now I've boogered up the windows. I've got to go back and rearrange them. As far as the controls of the music player, it's, you know, the same as the old Winamp, so we're not going to really talk about that. Really what I want to do is to go back to the QMMP website, and here at the top, if you click on plugins, you'll get to this plugins section for QMMP. And there's some really cool plugins to allow you to extend the functionality of QMMP. I'm not going to install or show any of these plugins, but at least one of them I know people will be interested in. I'm not going to talk about it because what it does, it searches a very popular video content platform because this video content platform often has large music channels on it. And what it does is it searches and plays music directly from that very large video platform. But what I'm interested in is skins. If I click on skins and I go to QMMP-skins, you know, I've got this directory of about, I don't know, a dozen different skins. They're compressed, right? So they're archived packages and you don't have to unarchive these when you download them. But what I did is I download all of these and then if I go back to the uh, oh, empty workspace here. Let me open my file manager, pcmanfm, and in my home directory, of course, you have .config. And in .config, at least this is the case when I install QMMP on Arch Linux, you should find in .config a folder that was automatically created for you, QMMP, and then you have this folder here called skins, which will be empty, and you can see I just dropped all of those 
archived packages into that skins directory. And once I've done that, let me go back to the um, QMMP player. What I could do, go back to the little menu here and go into settings. And let me move this window. And now those are all of those archived packages, which are essentially skins, which are themes. And these are very, very similar to like old school Winamp themes, some of them, you know. So this is Ergo, which I believe was a default theme for QMMP some years back. Then you've got GN Amp uh, Blue. Then you've got the standard GN Amp, which is green. Then you've got the skin 9 theme which i actually like that that's not bad i can't move the uh, window around while this one is open and then we have a Zenus. and that's a sexy little skin and then winamp which as you can guess you know is very reminiscent of winamp and then the default theme and then the oxygen theme which i'm assuming was for the oxygen uh, kde plasma theme then you have par skin par skin is from for the Partis Linux distribution. There's a Linux distribution called Partis, and uh, yeah, this bear and the the claw marks and everything that is uh, theming from uh, or branding essentially from the Partis Linux distribution. That's interesting. Somebody made that, and there's another one also with Partis in mind. Then you have a black theme, which is a black background with uh, blue accents, and then black modded, which is essentially just black and gray. Then you have a sodium skin, which, yeah, that's not bad, actually, for a really light skin. I kind of like that. And then the sparrow theme, which, heck, yeah, that might be the best one. That might be the one I keep. So, yeah, pretty cool. Well, let me go back into view, tick off double-sized, get these windows back to a more appropriate smaller size. Although, again, on modern resolution monitors, this is a bit tough, right, as far as on the eyes, the font's a little small. But for those of us that like these kinds of things for nostalgia purposes, it really gives you that old school win out kind of feeling. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Game James Maxim, my homies Too Bald, Matt Mimit, Mitchell, Paul, Royal West, Armor Dragon, Bash Potato, Chuck, Commander Angry, George, Lee, Marstrom, Methos, Nate, Er, Jan, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Realities for Lust, Red Prophet, Roland, Tools, Devler, Willie, and Zenibit. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at QMMP would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux, free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace. Of course, these days, Emacs is my music player.